G'day everyone, welcome back to What I Fix Daily, and today for a change we've actually got a PC to fix, and this one has come in with uh, basically, it was intermittently powering up and now it doesn't power up at all. So, most likely candidate is the power supply, but we'll have a look and see what's going on. Let's see if we can get this open first. Oh, what a, uh, interesting style. Well, first thing to notice is it's very clean, and it looks like we've got a third party power supply in here. This is not an original, as in uh, even for this particular machine. I mean, it's a thermal take, but I don't know. It doesn't look like it would have come with this case, because this is a Cougar case. Whatever that means. Uh, let's see what we can at least uh, get by powering it up. Uh, graphics in. There's my keyboard and mouse. Keyboard and mouse. And the old crucial power. Oh, well, I saw the lights dip. So that'll be interesting. Power's good. Now to find the button. What do you mean? It powers up. And that powers up. It's all powering up. That's just great. Now I have a mystery. Oh boy. Looks like this one's got a solid state drive in it as well. Hmm. Why do the easy ones turn into something else? Let me just adjust the camera here. Zoom in a bit. Well, I can hardly say that's not working. I'll shut this down. Now, given that it's fairly new, I have my doubts as to it having capacitor issues, but... Eh... Bloody hell. And this is how I end up losing money each day. Because you get a job in, you think, yep, okay, I'll be able to do this and this and this, and I should be able to pick up a certain amount of money for it. And then it turns out it's a no job. Okay, I could be wrong. Let's pull this power supply out and have a look inside. I mean, the power supply is pretty filthy. Yeah, oh, great. It's all cable tied in. Everybody knows how much I love cable ties. And I can't see squat in here. Let's see how old this is. Where's your date code? Well, it's certainly been choked at the bottom. Yeah, let's see, I'll pop this out. Great, the wrong air filter comes out. Oh, it's a little bit dirty. And that has gone through under here. Ah, oh, man. It seems all the... Okay, this has got to be what it came with because it's all routed through the system very nicely. Another one of these fucky mouse jobs, F U C K E Y F here anyway. <sighs> well, she boots just fine again. What's the better it was something like the graphics card sitting out of its socket or something like that. 
and then when the people have moved it, it's come good. But then, what's the additional bit that I hand it back to them? They get it back home, and then it does it again. Yeah, yeah, just just great. Shut down. Let's have a feel. Yeah, that feels pretty good in there. Honestly, nothing really is setting off my alarms or anything. I mean, it's a little dusty, but come on, realistically, it's pretty damn good. Uh, I do want to have a look inside this power supply. Oh, God, I just... Uh. See, what's going to happen here is I'm going to spend... some 20 or 30 minutes pulling these cables out, messing up the previous... or the person who assembled it, messing up their good work, because I know I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm really not going to probably honour and respect the uh, quality of what they've done. I'm going to shove it straight back in any way I can. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way I can disassemble this. Yeah, let, let's try to disassemble this this way. Great. Now my lamp won't even reach. Oh yeah, this is one of those days. I went and bought myself a little Jabra Bluetooth headset so that I could do without having to wear this current headset that's got cables. But even though my laptop shows that it's got a Bluetooth adapter in it, I can't seem to get the blimmin' thing to work. So I don't know whether it's lying to me. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't know about other people, but I have never had much luck with Bluetooth at all. That's interesting. Um, yeah, just something about Bluetooth, it seems like it's always a real schlep to get it to work, and then it barely works. It's on computers, that is. I don't know what it's like on phones. Uh, and for something that was meant to initially be cheaper and easier and lightweight, it really didn't live up to any of that. Uh, this seem fine. Honest to God, I'd be really quite shocked if there was something legitimately wrong here. None of the caps that I can see are even remotely looking like they're popping. What is interesting here is this uh, plastic thing. I don't understand that. I'm not sure why they've done that. Yeah, I'm gonna gonna call that a bust. Don't know what's going on. Uh, what a nice fat waste of my time today. I know, I know, I'm griping, I'm griping. Just seems lately I am having a run of these sort of jobs. Or jobs that I can fix but people can't afford to have them fixed. Or jobs that I wish I could fix but I just don't have the equipment to fix it. Like, uh, well, the iPhone repairs, things like that. Yeah. As it's been mentioned in the comments, 
I uh, really could do with a microscope. So, any of you people are feeling like Santa Claus out there? <laughs> oh, come on, what's going on? What is wrong? Yeah, I'm gonna. If you're not careful, I'm gonna table flip soon. Why are you locked in there? The other fun thing with these sheet metal press jobs is you never know when you're going to um, suddenly become a slasher victim and start bleeding everywhere. It only takes one bird edge and you just touch it the wrong way. I know back in the 90s uh, when I was what is going on here? It doesn't want to come back in here for some reason. What's going on? There? Um, <coughs> yeah, the computer shop that I worked in, we got these truly god awful cases. Um, I think the brand name was called Pine or something like that. Nonetheless, and those suckers would make us bleed every day. It was terrible. And the I remember the circuit boards in particular, because this was like a whole suite of parts that would come from a particular company. Um, the PCBs they were fiberglass, but they were really gritty, nasty fiberglass, and it would just it was not polished off or anything like that. It was just like raw cut, and so you'd end up with. So you'd be bleeding and you'd have fiberglass through your fingers and then to top it all off these things would fail probably about 30% of the time so you'd assemble the machine, fire it up and they'd either pop or they just wouldn't work or something or a couple of weeks later they'd come back and they'd be failing that was probably a really nasty six months of anguish until we dropped that brand entirely uh, I'm going to have to get this junk out. Uh, where is my vacuum cleaner? I don't have my vacuum cleaner. It's another thing I need to get. One of the like dustbuster type things. Just for sucking up large clumps of dust like this. Because overall dustbusters are pretty well, <laughs> pretty useless at doing their job. Mm, I'll just clean this off. I'd like to blame it as an overheating issue, but I'm not sure that's truly going to be valid in this case. And let's see. Nope, do the other way around. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to put this back together, run it a couple of times, check with the client, try to get more details on what they think is happening. I mean, it's not that I don't actually believe the client, I mean, but it's just a case of... Uh, I don't know. Let me run a memory test on it and then run some uh, burn CPU tests on it. Yeah, that's interesting. There's only been two screws installed into this. Nothing else really lined. I mean, there are some. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Why do I have so many screws left? I've got two for there, two for there. I've got one left. Maybe. Maybe it did fit in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's still not what I'd consider a confident fit. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I really feel like this is going to be a case of I'm going to fiddle and fart around with it, not come up with anything conclusive, put it all back together, send it back to the person, and then maybe in two or three days they're going to report that it's done it again. And we may find out it's something like a glitchy power cable that they've got on their side of things, or a power board that's not so good. Uh, it won't be the first time I've had that happen. So let's run the burn. Uh, MP6 That should about do it I have no idea how many... what is this? Uh, it's a uh, Intel i5 4570 Okay, let's see what the temperatures are like uh, the CPU seems strangely hot. Yeah, I'm sitting at 87 there, which is way hot. Or is it? I just wouldn't have expected to be that hot that quick. Kill all the bands. A CPU like this, uh, it should be idling at around about <clears throat> 40 something degrees, but it's sitting at 55, 57. A little more than I would have thought. It just has the standard low profile Intel cooler on it. Uh, Damn it. I don't have my preferred piece sensor graphing temperature indicator in here. Let's so we'll see if we can get extra run. Okay. What we can do um, every second okay We're just going to watch the temperature, see what happens. Looks like, uh, according to the BIOS, critical set at 100 degrees. And 92, 93. I mean, it's high, but it's not. Uh, let's see if it gets to 100. It still doesn't explain, though, why they say it didn't start up, but it can be, once again, a case of the customer not quite being able to convey what they mean in a way that you understand. Um, from their perspective, if it, um, even if the lights come on and it makes noises in the case, if it doesn't boot to Windows and it hasn't, yeah, well, we just hit 99. Let's see if we're going to BIOS crash uh, shut down here. And maybe if this maybe if this whole unit is kept in a cupboard or something like that it could well and truly push out. There's a hundred, it didn't shut... No, I was expecting the bars to shut things down but uh, well it's hitting a hundred degrees so I think alright we probably do have an issue with the cooling so I'll have a look at that and take the CPU cooler off, give it a clean, see what's going on. The CPU does feel loose I uh, should say the CPU cooler feels loose. And that's not just because I undid it. Let's have a look. Yeah, alright. We've got ourselves a very dry um, pad stuff here. Yeah, let's have a look. So that's that's very dry. That that actually hasn't been in contact for a while. That's dried out. So there you go. That's our most likely problem. So now I need to scrape it all off the CPU with a plastic spudger. You do not want to do that with a metal one unless you want to have nice scratches on your expensive i5. Now the question is why did it do that? Uh, is one of these are these locks failing? Guess we'll find out. Okay, go get my CPU cooling. 
Oh, I'll show you the CPU after it's scratched off. Yeah, so all I do is just this is all off now. Okay, uh, I'm just going to brush this out. It'll just fall out later, and I'll probably vacuum it when I'm all finished. A bit more scratching to get that off. Take a cheap paper napkin, some 100%, well, 99.99% .99 isopropylene. Give it a rub down. That's much better. So little bits come off there. Same with the cooler. Don't use rubbing alcohol or things like that because they contain a high, about a 30% percentage of water in them. So you have to make extra effort to ensure that you get that off. Uh, let's see. And for my bonding again, I'm just using Arctic alumina. It's. Oh, bloody hell, this cable's swinging around in the breeze. There we go. It's nothing exotic, it does the job. I mean, for 99% of the machines in the world, it's more than ample. So, I'll just put on a little bit. You don't really need a lot. Fortunately, this stuff does tolerate having excess, whereas a lot of, in the older days, um, if you put too much there, it wouldn't level out, it wouldn't squeeze out or anything, so you had to be quite careful. But with this stuff, I can really cheat. Just put down a reasonable layer. Now oh, that looks really messy right now. Hopefully there should be enough. Just going to brush out this fan while I've got it out. And all we have to do is... Uh, actually I better make sure all these... pins are back, retracted. When you put it down, you apply pressure onto it. Um, and then just, yeah, it's, should be able to just wiggle it a little bit. What am I doing here? And, um, why aren't those going in? That's better. So you got to pull these up to get them to go down, because it's, you got to get the pin to get out of the that uh, clear forked foot area. <laughs> okay, squish it back and forth like this in a bit of a circular type motion and that will push down the, uh, it'll spread out the, uh, the heat transfer compound. I guess the proof will be in the pudding. <laughs> Right, yeah. It really doesn't feel actually overly confident there. I will admit I have my concerns. I'm just going to check the other side. Well, you can see all the pins have come through to split out the head, and they're all locked. So, alright. I guess in this case, let's boot her up and see how it goes this time. Alright, let's start up the X session. And, well, that's certainly better. We're at 50, 50, 42, 43, down to 41 here. So it's an improvement. But we're going to drive it hard now, watch, uh, um, 
There you go, see they're all in the 40s there. That's much better. I'm going to run all the um, burn P6. Should about do it. Let's see how we go. Now, if you're wondering about all the stuff that I use and some of the stuff that I want to get and all those sort of things, just check in my descriptions of these videos. I've got everything there. Links, links off to various places. And there's also links to other people, uh, other people's YouTube channels that I think you might enjoy. People like Lewis Rossman, Chris Long, um, Jessa of iPad Rehab, and Jason Vilma, or I should say Vilma, of uh, STS Telecom. All, pe all people who you'll find hopefully enjoyable to watch. And certainly I watch them all the time, pick up hints and tips. Okay, well, it's still staying below 80 here. I'm really happy with that. That's definitely significantly better before we straight away went up to the 85, approaching 90. So I think at this stage I am going to consider this as the fix, which is a really nice change from what I was thinking it was going to be. I'm a little concerned about it reading 0 RPM, but I suspect that is just the Linux limitation in this case. It's an older kernel. It probably doesn't have all the information for this particular motherboard. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still hot. Personally, for an i5, I think that cooler, the low profile Intel ones that they've got in here, is less than what you really want. Uh, but it should work and I will make note to the person that they need to make sure that it's kept in a open environment not boxed up and it should continue to work okay if they continue to have issues then we'll look at putting a new cooler in there maybe one of those uh, new high profile ones that I'll put in one of the other videos and they'll certainly keep the temperature down but I think for now I think we're good so thank you very much everyone for watching and persisting and listening to all my griping and like I said if you're after or curious about anything that I'm using or want to get have a look in the descriptions of the video and all the links are there and um, yeah I guess I'll see you next time when I do the next computer or phone so thank you very much and I'll see you later